now those relaxations are gone you need to complete your attendance as well <coughs> anyway so let's start the lecture so now we have started discussing some magnetics and uh, what we have understood that if we want to compute flux in any uh, system let us say core and coil these things are given so we need to have certain set of assumptions for solving the maxwell equations so the assumptions are that the most of the flux is associated with the core alone and uh, there is certain average length which is not changing much with respect to the you know wherever we want to compute so uh, the meaning is that flux is uniformly distributed in this core and then we have the cross sectional area that's also uniform there is no displacement current so with these assumptions what we say that okay our flux is basically some kind of uh, you know this this kind of expression we are able to get where we can take out two different components one which is based on the excitation which is called the mmf another which is function of the geometry and material and all these things so this is called the inverse of the reluctance or permeance so what we have basically that this magnetic circuit can be approximated as an electrical circuit where the mmf can look like an emf and the flux can look like a current and reluctance can look like a resistance so we can simplify our computations we can compute the reluctance based on the geometry we can compute the mmf applied on the circuit based on what excitation and number of turns are there in the coil and then we can compute our flux simply like this now even if we have certain air gap in the core we can have two different reluctances one which is associated with the iron core another which is associated with the air gap over here and we can compute mostly what we have that r2 is much larger than r1 and so most of the reluctance is like the total reluctance is very very close to the r2 and r2 alone can decide how much flux will be contained in this core and we have another condition if we want to have such kind of geometry we must ensure that the air gap is not very large which means the uh, it's much lesser than the square root of the area of the space whatever we are having over here so in order to avoid the fringing effect and the non adherence because of that so we try to keep it like this now we have tried to compute the self inductance and uh, some more electrical Uh, quantities or parameters for the circuit so self inductance we have computed then we have seen how the energy is distributed within this system in the iron core and in the air gap so most of the energy is confined within the air gap so that is how the dc inductors are made if we have to make inductor at certain value l what we try to have we try to give some small air gap so that number of turns are not very high for designing this inductor and here the energy whatever would come of li square this will largely be stored within the air gap that's the meaning of this now if we have multiple coils let us say we have coil with number of turns n1 and current as i1 and another coil with number of turns n2 and current as i2 we can compute the flux again in a similar manner now we have total excitation given like this the total mmf and so we can also get the self inductance and the mutual inductance of these two coils so by computing the flux linkage for each coil we can give what is the self inductance for the for a given coil and what are the mutual inductances which are coming into the system so these things we can compute just for our general understanding and uh, then we have tried to understand the bh curve and what we are basically seeing over here is that this bh what we are trying to write whatever it is at microscopic level the same thing is same thing can be called as lambda equals li at the macroscopic level so or at the magnetic circuit level say if you have the core with certain coil or some other configuration which can be uniformly defined and know all the approximations are valid then we have b equals mu h applicable at every point of this core and lambda equals li is applicable for the whole system so whatever excitation you are giving 
whatever inductance it has, that will define what is the flux linkage in the coil or in the system. So these are basically same things where one is defining the output and other is basically the input. So excitation versus the flux linkage or the magnetic field intensity versus the magnetic flux density. These two are basically same things. So what we have seen. OK, I think that portion is kind of missing from here. So I can draw again. So we are seeing the hysteresis curve for this. I can write H as well as I both are applicable and B as well as lambda. So what we have basically if we have a core which is completely demagnetized and we start giving some excitation in that basically the flux density increases. And there is certain limit that what could be the maximum flux density in any given material. So it has a maximum limit. So it starts increasing and after certain time it saturates. And reaches the maximum value. Now if you try to reduce that it doesn't go to zero, but it retains certain value which is called BR the remnant magnetic field. And if you want to reduce this, let's say demagnetize it back to the zero value of this uh, magnetic field, you actually need to give some negative value of excitation, which is called coercive magnetic field intensity HC. And if you continue going in the negative direction, you will find that similar saturation phenomena you will encounter on the negative side as well. Then if you try coming back, Again, it will not come to zero, but it will cut the y axis at some point minus Br, which is again same value, same magnitude, but on the opposite direction. And then if you continue, again there will be a positive Hc value which will reduce the magnetic flux in the core to zero, and then it will follow this hysteresis curve. So based on the values of Br and Hc, we can classify the materials. Let us say if there is certain material which needs lot of value of HC, say large value of HC, which means that it needs large value of excitation to reduce the remnant magnetic field to zero. Such materials are basically called hard material, hard magnetic material. So these are difficult to magnetize as well as demagnetize. So the application for such materials is basically in DC motors, we can say where we have, we need to have certain amount of self excitation or making magnets, these kind of things are, these, these are the applications for such materials. Whereas if you want to look for AC motor, so we need to have certain material which is magnetized quickly as well as demagnetized quickly because we are giving sinusoidal excitation. So it should not take large amount of coercive field intensity to reduce this remnant magnetic field to zero. So the value of HC for materials which are needed in AC motor should be much less compared to the hard materials or for the magnets. So these materials which are getting excited easily and then demagnetized easily, these are called soft materials. This we are talking from magnetic point of view. So hard meaning which is difficult to magnetize and demagnetize, soft meaning which is difficult to, which is very, very easy to magnetize and demagnetize. So these are called soft magnetic material. So different applications I have told over here. So based on which machine we are handling, we try to use such kind of material. So these properties are important when you are going to design your motor and we need to choose the appropriate material for the particular application. Now if we talk about magnets, let us say, so magnets are something which are already magnetized, which means they already have certain amount of flux density. And if you connect in any magnetic circuit, for example, you take a magnet and connect some soft magnetic material and make it in a form of core. and have some moving part over here. So you will find that this magnet will have tendency or the system will have tendency to rotate this and keep it aligned along this axis. 
so which means without any electrical excitation we are able to maintain the magnetic field and this is what the magnets are known for so these are already magnetized and they have certain amount of let's say the remnant magnetic field you can call so generally what happens these materials or these uh, kind of systems they operate in the second quadrant of the bh curve which means these will be loaded with certain magnetic field and if you apply let us say you keep another coil over here and try to demagnetize this whole system and bring it back to zero then this magnet can be completely made ineffective the flux lines or the flux density in the system can be reduced to zero if you apply negative excitation the meaning is that property of magnet is dictated by these two terms the remnant magnetic field and the coercive field intensity how large is your remnant magnetic field and how large is your hc that defines the quality of the magnet for a low quality magnet you will have very small value of hc you give a small excitation and it will reduce drop to zero so those materials let's say so any soft magnetic material you have used for making the magnet this kind of phenomena you may observe if you have good quality magnet you will see a large value of hc and so these magnets are basically useful in a larger manner you can have any amount of loading loading meaning that you can have some magnetic circuit connected across the magnet so this coil is not necessarily connected it is only for checking the quality of the magnet now whenever let us say you have certain magnetic material given say this blue line is what is defining your magnet it has certain amount of remnant magnetic field and it has certain amount of it needs certain amount of coercive field intensity to reduce it to zero now what happens let us say when we load such system let's say this is our magnet which we have loaded through this magnetic circuit and after that you release this take out this magnet and you know uh, keep it let's say for the perfectly closed path here there is some reluctance given over here but if you keep it closed perfectly the magnet is kind of loaded minimal so this is kind of loading condition and this is unloading so where we don't have any reluctance in the path the magnetic lines are perfectly finding path to move around and it is shorted kind of condition so between these two conditions let's say you have loaded and your field density has reduced to this point now if you try to remove the loading the magnet would not actually move to this original point it would have tendency to settle down to some lower value of br are you familiar with this phenomena what i am suggesting yes sir if the magnet is having original remnant magnetic field br let's say in this condition 1 you try to load it it goes to certain different value of b and again you come back to 1 it does not move to its original value and further let's say this br dash you have come back to now if further you try loading and loading it will basically move along certain different axis not along this original axis so this is wh what is this axis called this is called recoil axis this is recoil phenomena the analogy you can understand through let us say a spring is there you pull it let's say this is the original length you pull it it comes down say up to here and now you release it may not go back to its original value it may retain some of the things some of the length so now you have only lesser value for further operation lesser length for further operation this is kind of analogy given from the spring point of view and which is true for magnets so this is called recoil axis and it will form a small bh curve over here if i draw this clearly so this say this is the recoil axis so it will form a small bh curve in this around this axis 
it will never go back to its original value where it was originally excited and kept or made for whatever value and this is called your recoil bh curve understand my point so due to loading some deterioration or some deformity has come now another property of good magnet is that this recoil axis should be as close as possible to the actual bh curve that is small hysteresis loop uh, point is not clear yes that small hysteresis loop uh, it forms a small hysteresis loop uh, at the new location yeah sir uh, but when we uh, sir uh, when we apply uh, much more uh, coercive force uh, than uh, that is needed to demagnetize hmm so uh, hysteresis loop uh, is what is not clear i did not get your question sir it forms a hysteresis loop in uh, the second quadrant only uh, this yeah what's the question sampan sir uh, sir uh, i understand uh, but uh, when you say that it forms a hysteresis loop uh, at uh, this location only this okay. point i don't understand okay let me draw it little bit again <clears throat> say this is your original this is when you have this magnet in this position one you have the remanent magnetic field over here right now what you have done you have taken the magnet to position 2 so what happens this comes down this comes down say to location here now again you come back to position 1 so what will happen instead of going to the original value of br it will settle down to some other value of br say br dash so what will happen it's basically one line now what happens if you try loading and unloading again between 1 and 2 if you keep going instead of following this line it will follow a small loop over here it will go in this path and return back in this path similar to what we have in bh curve right it doesn't follow the same path this is small loop what it is forming is basically called the recoil bh curve or whatever name you want to give and this axis about which this is happening this phenomena this is called recoil axis that's the property of the magnet so for good quality magnet what we want that the recoil axis should be very very close to the original bh curve then even if it deviates little bit it will not be deteriorating much that's the meaning so three properties what we are getting from this understanding is that it should have good amount of br value high amount of hc value and the recoil axis should be as close as possible to the original meaning to say that this br or sorry bh curve should be almost like a line then even if it deteriorates it will move along this line only instead of having a curve do you understand this point yes sir okay any other confusion no sir so here i have taken out few examples of different magnets the properties which we have discussed we are trying to see over here in some practical magnets let us say first magnet we consider this this line which is having high value of br this is alnico fiber what do we have over here is that it has high value of br but very small value of hc say hc1 and br1 br1 is very high but hc1 is very small which means what you try to load and the magnet gets demagnetized very easily so 
it will drop down its magnetic value very quickly and again the recoil axis when it is formed it will be much far from the original magnet so these are some very low quality magnets are lego 5 understanding my point compared to this let us say if you talk about this the next line which is there which is basically your alnico 8 what it has it has little lower value of br that is fine say br has come down to br2 but it has little longer value of hc so we are compromising somewhere on the value of highest magnetic flux density but we are getting a larger value of coercive field intensity so little better quality somewhere we have compromised the maximum number but we are getting a better quality because it can retain its magnetic field for a larger loading and if you see the recoil axis if it forms that will not be very far compared to this it will be little closer to the actual magnetic field understanding my point you understand my point yeah, yes sir Now, yes, third type of yes, magnet. If I take over here, let's say basically this ceramic seven, new type of magnetic material, say ceramic seven. Here we have further lower value of Br. The remnant magnetic field is further lower, but our Xc is much larger. So we can use more magnets to improve the total flux density what we need. But the property that it is giving higher coercive. field intensity which means that the loading can be done in a better manner and you see it is forming a very linear bh curve which means the recoil axis is going to be closer to original bh curve much closer compared to the previous two magnets so the quality of magnet we can say that this is worst quality what we have seen alnico 5 then better quality would be alnico 8 little better quality let's say this alnico 8 then ceramic 7 will be further improved in terms of quality then if we go for certain other rare earth element based magnets and all we see this samarium cobalt this is giving much higher value of br compared to the alnico 8 and ceramic 7 and much high value of hc as well so this is even better quality compared to the other three options what we have seen previously and it is also coming almost linear maybe somewhere it is deviating from the line but more or less it is maintaining a linear graph so this is for the better quality of magnet samarium cobalt what we are seeing over here and if you go for further say neodymium iron boron kind of magnets they have superiority in all the aspects highest value of br highest value of hc and very very linear graph so these are some of the very costly magnets very very good quality magnets you have much higher value of br and it doesn't demagnetize very easily and it maintains a linear curve so the recoil axis and all is also very close to this original bh curve so when we are choosing the magnet this could be a good reference how we are trying to have no oh, what we are trying to have in our system how we can select understanding my point yes sir fine another thing what you can look for is the total area what it is confining within this graph that you can say as the energy contained in the magnet so that's also one indication this may have higher energy compared to this or it may have equal energy but something may be better for the ceramic 7 compared to alnico 5 so different different parameters we need to have for selecting the magnets proper am i clear yes sir okay yes sir so i stop the magnet part and bh curve part over here now let us move to something which is more physical which is more practical you can say let's say we have a magnetic circuit 
and we want to operate that. We will see what observations we are getting. Say for simplicity, we have a C core magnet, electromagnet. And we have, say, a plunger which can move, a magnetic arm or iron arm which can move. It is hinged at this point and it can move. And we have excitation given through this coil. This is all, say, soft magnetic material. Now, say this gap is something like, say, LG, or you can say that total arc, what it will make, will be something like angle theta. From here to here, it makes an arc, which is like angle theta. Now, what will happen if we excite the coil? This is the general thing, right? We all have learned. What will happen if we simply excite the coil? Try to attack plunger. Say again. It will get attached to the plunger. It will move and move towards the core, and it will come into this position, which may be, which may look like this. Correct. Now, what is happening when it is moving from this position to this position? What is happening to this magnetic circle? <clears throat> Say, if we talk in terms of the flux linkage or in terms of the inductance, is the inductance constant throughout or simpler thing? Let us say we first talk about reluctance. Is the reluctance constant throughout? No, right? Changing. Yeah. Is the inductance constant? No, sir. So basically, inductance and reluctance are related like this. Correct? That's what we have derived in the earlier class. Now, if let us say you keep a constant current over here, what will happen? Say we try to draw the lambda versus i graph. Now, because air gap is there, the dominant reluctance will be due to the air, which means our reluctance is highest in this position. R in this position is R max, and in this position it is R min. So conversely, our inductance will be L min over here and L max over here. You understand this point? Yes. Correct. Yes. Now we are relating our flux linkage with lambda into i, which means one part which we which is our excitation, another part which is property of the magnetic circuit. So what will happen when you have your this plunger held in this position where r is maximum or l is minimum, you will have a line which will define the excitation versus lambda graph. And this line basically will correspond to L minimum. So if you keep increasing the excitation, lambda will move and you can stop at certain excitation, say here. Understanding my point? Now, if you release, you were holding this plunger over here. If you release this plunger now at this position, at this excitation, what will happen? It will start moving towards the magnet, electromagnet. So the meaning is what? Your L is now changing. Your excitation I is fixed. I is fixed. And L is basically changing from minimum to say this is the maximum line. So it will move from this position to this position. What will move? Your flux linkage. For the same excitation, now you have larger value of inductance. So which means what? Your flux linkage is going to be more. Understand my point? And this is maximum, which means it cannot move further. It's perfectly aligned. So after that, what you do? You take down the excitation to zero. Now, if someone asks, 
what are these different components in this lambda i graph say you are familiar with the terms like energy and co energy right are you or not so yes or no familiar right yes sir okay Tejdeep is not there today. That's why a lot of silence is there. All of you are not responding. He is little bit more enthusiastic in giving response. Okay. So basically, whatever area is confined between this upper triangle that we call as co-energy, right? so we have co energy graph or co energy area shaded for this l minimum position and let us say if i have the co energy area shaded for this l max position now if i have to define what is the mechanical work done say w mech from moving the plunger from here to here how would you say in terms of the this area or the, in terms of co energy so it is basically the difference between this co energy so and this co energy <clears throat> or you can say that the area which comes between this triangle this is basically resulting into the mechanical work done so what you have done you have excited now the plunger starts moving and then you have reduced the excitation so this area what is confined between this triangle or within this triangle is basically that basically corresponds to the mechanical work done in this process it has moved it has gained some momentum no it has gained some kinetic energy and it goes and hits this electromagnet if you don't stop it right now the energy which is remaining let us say whatever is in this triangle the upper triangle which means which is shaded by this black area this is kind of only you are giving the excitation which means something related to your magnetization and demagnetization so this energy returns back to the source you know the concept of this uh, reactive power right so reactive power yes, doesn't sir. result in you into any work what it does it flows between the source and back and forth between the source and load it's only meant for the excitation so this which is this energy what you are seeing over here this shaded black area so this understanding are you getting how the work done and the other excitation part are related with this graph yes sir understand my point yes sir yes sir now this is the principle which is basically used when you go for motors like switch reluctance motor so instead of having a linear part which is moving we have something like a part which can rotate so basically that will give a more uniform rotation or mechanical movement so <clears throat> let's say you have a plunger which is positioned something like this and this is forming your stator and these are all soft magnetic materials which means the coercive magnetic field is not very large for all this now what we have we have coils here and here and we are trying to excite this coil and so in response to that this piece of magnetic material it moves along this axis the dot drawn over here and the flux lines will be confined something like this and something like this correct that is how the normal operation of this motor is now what happens again you will have similar phenomena let's say if you talk about the flux linkage and excitation part there will be a position which is basically say this axis 
you can call it theta equals 0 degree or the axis which is along the unaligned position. The magnet is perfectly unaligned which means the maximum reluctance is, ob is uh, obtained from this system and there is another axis which is basically say theta equals 90 degree which means the magnet is perfectly aligned. This piece is perfectly aligned so reluctance is minimum or inductance is maximum. Now let's see if I draw this axis of L min like this here and L max is let us say much higher compared to this or much steeper compared to that so it comes over here. And we also know that there is limit for any magnetic material how much flux linkage or how much flux density it can have. There is certain limit on that. Beyond that, it doesn't get magnetized. Now, what happens basically? We are trying to get some work done out of this system. So, what we are doing? We will excite this coil when this is like kind of, oh, the magnet is kind of unaligned and we will keep it excited till it gets aligned. That's the thing we will follow, right? You understand my point? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we will excite yes, the electromagnet in this along this line. Say we move up to here. So what will happen if you have to draw different, let's say it moves from theta to 90 degree. So this L min corresponds to 0 degree, L max corresponds to 90 degree. Any other angle will basically be in between this. Correct? These are different different inductances. Say you take at 20 degree, 40 degree, 60 degree, 80 degree and so on. So you will find different values of inductance which will basically in the increasing order. This is fine, right? Yes. Now what options we have is that when we are exciting the coil in this position say L min and then we allow the magnet to move it can at max go to this position the flux linkage can at max reach the maximum limit of lambda correct beyond that it cannot cross it can hit here so what may happen basically the magnet gets perfectly aligned so because this is saturating so this will result into this kind of curve. Understanding my point? So other way if I say that, if you excite the magnet in this position, say theta equals to 0, it will follow this graph. If you excite the magnet in L max position, theta equals 90 degree, then it will follow this curve which will bend around this point because the lambda has a maximum limit. So it will follow instead of following continuously the linear graph, it will bend slightly. Any other graph will also start bending closer to this limit. Understanding my point? Now, if I ask that, we have to, we are trying to take out the maximum, no, we are trying to extract the maximum mechanical work from this system. So, what we should do? Say one option we have is basically, we started from this L minimum, we went to some theta equal to say 40 degree and then we reduce the excitation to zero. In that case, we will be having this amount of mechanical work done extracted from the system. Understand my point? This is one option. Other option what we may do, we may go all the way up to say theta equals 60 degree. In that case, our mechanical work done will be in this bigger area. Correct? And then you reduce the excitation and come back to zero. The other option could be you go all the way up to say 80 degree. So you are covering a bigger area compared to the previous one. So the maximum amount of work done if we are trying to extract, which means we need to operate the magnet between the two extreme positions of inductance, the L min L max. So you start the excitation at L min, 
you let it move all the way up to the maximum saturation of this uh, the flux linkage and then you allow the excitation to come back to zero in this manner we will be able to extract the maximum work done which will basically be the area confined within this understanding my point yes sir okay yes. at any point we know that energy what it, what is stored in the system is half li square right <clears throat> correct now we also have option that you do not excite for let's say this current say you don't go to maximum current what you do you operate only let's say half of this okay but i will move up to the maximum position i will move up to here say and then i will come back in this case we are not again we are not extracting the maximum amount of energy what we could have extracted so from utilization point of view what we are seeing that if we have to operate the srm we need to utilize the magnetic material properly or fully the meaning is that you have to have certain amount of energy which is you know, getting extracted from here and which goes closer to the limit of the flux linkage say is this point clear or not yes sir yes sir now the question is okay we are exciting up to this current say i by 2 and we are not able to extract the maximum energy say if we have lesser load requirement we can operate for this current fine if we have to operate for the highest load we need to go for this rated current i okay what is the problem with 2i if i keep increasing the excitation the current carrying conductor means uh, thick it will be like okay that is one thing another thing is that see yes you are getting you might be getting something on this side but the problem is that you are passing almost double of current which means the conductor thickness and other things what samuna datta is saying that needs to be more to have this kind of current operation second thing when you are moving up to this deep into the saturation you also have to come back otherwise what will happen if you keep it excited the magnet will have tendency to get stuck in this position for a longer time so a free motion will not be available for this kind of system so we need to go up to certain degree of saturation but we should not go too deep into the saturation to avoid these kind of scenarios so that is the meaning of utilization of this motor based on the load and based on the other requirements we excite or we use the current to have the utilization of this magnetic material this is utilization of magnetic material if you go for any other graph let's say which is not going towards the saturation we are not using it properly we have little lesser utilization for the magnetic material now one more way we will try to see this this is the energy confined over there and here we are keeping our excitation constant say co energy we know that our torque is basically nothing but this do u by do theta right this is well known from our previous uh, lectures or you know, chapters we we understand this so because we are keeping or we are talking about system where we are not varying our current we are keeping a fixed excitation so this can be written in a form and we take the magnitude let us say i square do l by do theta the other way to understand this phenomena is that the excitation you have to keep until you have some changing value of l to generate any useful torque if let us say either of the quantities say either current becomes zero or the l becomes stable let's say at the l minimum or l maximum so which means the slope of this is zero then you do not generate any torque 
torque is basically product of the current and the rate of change or change in the inductance with respect to position so for this system let us say if we draw how would our inductance look like it is changing from some minimum value to maximum value that we know and when theta is going all the way from say 0 degree 90 180 270 360 and so on what is happening say a small value of this uh, flat curve is there and then more or less it is going on a linear pattern so at 90 degree it is perfectly aligned it is reaching the maximum value what we have seen over here for 0 degree it was minimum and then it follows this graph now if we have to generate any useful torque what we need basically we need the rate of change or the change in inductance with respect to theta so we can plot our do l by do theta more or less this is linear so what will come that our do l by do theta will look like this now the question is if we keep a fixed excitation let us say if i keep a constant current throughout say this is my i and i am keeping it like this what will happen to my torque what will be the torque here in this zone first zone 0 to 90 positive torque positive what will happen in this zone negative torque negative torque what will happen here uh, positive negative, negative positive. then pulsating torque no resultant torque will be it is going positive and negative alternatively so what is the net torque generated in the system zero, zero. so what is the meaning of that that if there is a system like this and you keep your coil excited it will oscillate between this position and ultimately it will get aligned along this and then it will stay there further it will not move there is no scope the l has reached the maximum value it will aligned along this and that's all doesn't matter what amount of current now you are giving your motor will not move so what we need to have we should have excitation given at the correct position what is the correct position when let's say you are trying to generate positive torque so when this do l by do theta is positive you give excitation only during that time you remove the excitation when the inductance do l by do theta is negative now what will happen your negative torque will go away and you will have only positive torque come so you will have net positive value of torque of the say if you want to generate negative torque then you keep the excitation in this i am drawing with green color during this when do l by do theta is negative this will basically result into negative torque what is drawn in green note that the direction of current does not matter it is coming in form of i square what matters is the direction of this or the polarity of this do l by do theta understanding my point yes sir yes okay this is the basic principle of srm you might be aware i have just recapped it little bit so in practical scenario what may happen instead of varying linearly so nicely it may vary little bit in this manner slightly smoother curve and you may have a zone 
within this 0 to 90 degree where you have perfectly linear change in inductance. So this is where you need to have the excitation applied for the motor. OK, so we will wrap up the discussion in tomorrow's class. Any quick doubts you can ask now.